Hi, everyone. Um, so today I'll be talking to you about uh, some of the work I'll be doing over the next year as part of my Blue Waters grad, fellow, uh, grad fellowship. Um, I study in numerical relativistic simulations of binary black holes merging. And so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about initial gate, uh, improved initial data. Um, so the first question I want to answer is why do we need a computer like Blue Waters to do these simulations? Um, so we need to perform full numerical relativistic simulations um, in order to study a new set of initial data. And these NR simulations uh, require the evolution of 10 coupled nonlinear partial differential equations on a large 3D grid over a long period of time. Um, so it's necessary to have really high resolution around each black hole. So the way these grids are set up, they're adaptive mesh refinement grids. And so there's um, a larger grid surrounding both black holes and then a few more larger grids. And then around each black hole, there's smaller grids uh, to get more refinement close to black holes. Each of these refinement levels uh, increases in resolution by a factor of two. Um, so I use 10 grids total. Uh, so. Uh, there's a lot of data points, basically. Um, so Blue Waters can handle these large-scale complex simulations. Um, there's also a knowledgeable support system, both about the system itself and about the software we use for evolutions. Um, I use Einstein Toolkit. Uh, so many simulations, another benefit is that many simulations that we want to compare to have already been done on Blue Waters. Um, so it reduces the computation necessary for this project. So just to outline my talk, I'm going to introduce to you the field of study that I work in. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about my research goals and where it fits in in the scope of the greater gravitational wave astrophysics community. I'll introduce what trumpet analy analytic trumpet initial data actually is, uh, give you some preliminary results that I've been working on, and then talk about uh, adding in corrections for spinning black holes and what we expect to see there. Uh, so to perform these NR simulations, as I mentioned before, we use the Einstein Toolkit, which is a fully open source code um, used by numerical relativists to study uh, black holes and other sources, uh, heavy sources, um, evolving in time. Um, so we evolve something called the BSSN 3 plus 1 equation, equations of GR, and they require a specific choice for something called the gauge. So the gauge is made up of a, an equation that governs the lapse and also the shift. So the lapse is a scalar function and the shift is a, a three vector. Um, so these are first order differential equations and therefore we require that, uh, they require the specification of initial data. Um, so in general, we choose the lapse to be proportional to the product, can you see that? Yeah. The product of two vial scalars, so psi 4 governs gravitational radiation and psi 2 is the Coulomb field, um, and beta 0 is just set to 0. Uh, these are just convenient choices, um, so the goal of this project is fi to find a better choice for these initial, uh, initial values. Um, so we want to choose initial data that mimics the settled shape of the lapse and the shift uh, using the initial data, uh, using these initial data. Um, so hopefully this will allow the gauge to settle more quickly to its final shape and reduce error in the simulation and give us better gravitational waveforms. Uh, so what are some key challenges that we want to get through? Um, so we want to exploit the fact that we can just choose this initial data freely and construct these uh, analytic initial values. So first, what we did was study and model the late time behavior of the lapse and the shift um, to construct modeling equations that mimic the behavior uh, of, these, of these values after some time evolution. Um, so I'll refer to these new initial data as trumpet or trumpet plus spin if I'm including the spin correction. Uh, so then I'm going to apply these initial data, or then I did apply these initial data to an over-resolved case. So we just picked a convenient case that we, um, that we were, uh, that we had a lot of information about. So in particular, we chose a one to three mass ratio case uh, with non-spinning black holes. Uh, so we didn't expect to see a reduction in junk radiation in the beginning of the waveforms, uh, but we did hope to see a reduction in error uh, so a gain in effective resolution without actually having to increase the resolution. Uh, so now I want to apply these initial data to a spinning case. 
so since we, we found good results with uh, one to three mass ratio case, which I'll, I'll show in a little bit. Um, so we're now moving on to study a case with more moderate spin. So we picked an equal mass system, which is Q equals one, uh, and a moderate spin, uh, A equals 0 0.8. And we're gonna use, do these runs on the blue water system. So our ultimate goal is to, to apply this uh, initial data set to a more challenging case uh, of a spin of 0 0.99 or small mass ratios of 10 to 100 uh, or high energy collisions. So we can do all of these simulations, but uh, it would be great to gain accuracy in them uh, without actually having to increase the computational expense. So why does this research matter? Where does it fit in the broader context? So in 2015, everybody knows that uh, LIGO detected gravitational waves from, the, uh, from a binary black hole merger for the first time. Um, so current predictions uh, expect these detections to occur with much higher frequency. And so we've covered a lot of the parameter space, but the more sparsely covered areas are those with high spin and small mass ratio. And so we want to be able to do these simulations uh, for reduced computational costs because currently they take weeks to months of supercomputer time um, and increasing resolution slows them down substantially. Um, so these results will hopefully allow for uh, evolution of more difficult simulations without increasing computational expense and that'll help fill the parameter space out uh, just in time for LIGO's future detections. So to evaluate the performance of these initial data, we'll quantify our results in a few ways. So we're gonna look at deviations from zero of the L2 norm of the Hamiltonian and momentum constraint violations. Um, so basically we just want these to be zero and we'll see how far off they are. Um, we're gonna look at reduction, we're gonna hope to see reductions in junk radiation in the beginning of waveforms. And also uh, more quick convergence to an extrapolated waveform to infinity. We'll also, if, uh, if the data is available, we'll look at speed up and weaken strong scaling for each method. And so for each set of initial data, we'll run three resolutions uh, to calculate convergence. So how do we actually calculate these initial data? What am I looking at? So to do this, we evolve the lapse and the shift for quite some time until it settles to a final state. So what you're looking at here is uh, the X component of the shift on the large, through the large black hole and through the small black hole. Uh, the blue line is the evolved value of the shift here and here. And the red line is the analytic approximant uh, that we're working with, the initial value that we're giving it. And so you can see that they're pretty much the same shape, which is what we wanted. Um, and in, in reality, the uh, evolved lapse and shift lapse and shift oscillate above and below the y-axis depending on the orbital position of the black holes. We're still investigating why that is, but um, I just chose a slice that uh, they match up well. Um, so I'll just flash the equations that we're using here. So this is the initial values for the lapse and the shift. Um, they're just polynomial approximants, uh, and they're made up of matching parameters A, B, C, and D, and then a conformal factor. Um, so A, B, C, and D, we find them uh, by matching to two different slices of the space-time. So far away from the black holes, we match to the one plus log slice of Schwarzschild, a non-rotating a black, uh, black hole metric. Uh, and then as R goes to zero, we match to a trumpet slice lapse, lapse and shift, which is where the name comes from. Um, so then we rotate this into Cartesian coordinates so we can use it with our code. Um, so what do our results, our preliminary, preliminary results look like for um, the Q equals one third, one to three mass ratio uh, non-spinning case? Uh, so this is the a plot of the deviations from zero of the Hamiltonian constraint uh, violation. Uh, so there are six curves here. Um, there are three resolutions of each initial data set. So there's a low resolution trumpet and medium and high resolution trumpet initial data and uh, low, medium, and high resolution initial gauge run. So the initial, uh, the original initial gauge runs are the dotted lines uh, and then the solid lines are the trumpet initial gauge. Um, so I want to draw your eye only to the trumpet low resolution run. Um, so that's this blue line. If you look, you can see it's on par with or better than the um, 
medium resolution original initial gauge run at early times. And then at late times, um, it's better than even the high resolution in original initial gauge run. Um, so over here, we're gaining a factor of, over a factor of two in effective resolution by only changing the initial data, um, which was uh, a nice result. And then I'll show you just one component of the momentum constraint, uh, because they all uh, basically look like this. Um, so there's the, again, I want you to look specifically at the blue lines, the trumpet initial, uh, initial data is here, and the uh, original initial data is here, and you can follow the trumpet initial data and see that it, it matches the um, high resolution original initial data. And so you're gaining over a factor of two in effective resolution um, just by changing uh, the initial data. So where do I want to take this? So I want to study um, now spinning black holes because that's uh, where I want to take this project. So to construct these spin correction terms, uh, we just write the, conf uh, the conformal Kerr metric. So this is the Kerr metric with, in Cartesian coordinates with uh, spin in the z direction. Um, and then we can use the fact that the inverse of this metric is just equivalent to uh, this and calculate the lapse and the shift. Uh, we wanna also consider processing uh, systems of black holes. So we need to um, reorient this or rotate this metric into, uh, so that it, it works for arbitrary spin orientations. Um, and so I'm not gonna show those terms because they're really messy, uh, but uh, we have them coded into blue waters and we're, we have some preliminary results, um, but I'm not gonna show them because uh, I wanna get them completed first. Um, so, but we expect to see reductions in the peaks of the L2 norms of the Hamiltonian and mon momentum constraint violations. Um, we also expect to see reductions in junk radiation in the early part of the waveforms. Um, and then we also want to see faster convergence to uh, the extrapolated waveform in infinity. Um, so these are longer simulations than the other ones. I just wanted to give an idea of approximately how many of Blue Water's resources I'm gonna be using. Um, so for the coarsest grid spacing, uh, is the, this is the lowest resolution on the outermost level of the grid. And so these are the spacings between the points. Um, and then these will be using eight nodes and then the highest resolution run will be using 16 nodes. Um, I also want you to note that um, I'm gonna, for the low and medium resolution runs, I'm using like between three and 5,000 node hours, but the, um, for the highest resolution run, I'm using almost 11,000. So there's a nonlinear jump there, and um, it's another reason why we need more accurate waveforms at lower resolution, because obviously there's a, a huge computational cost uh, associated with increasing resolution. Um, so all three of these runs are running now. Um, they're uh, equal mass with spin equals 0 0.8, and I'll use the trumpet initial gauge plus spin corrections. Um, and so I guess to conclude and talk about where I want to take this, um, preliminarily uh, the Q equals one third non-spinning trumpet initial data case works really well. Um, so we expect to see similar results using the trumpet plus spin initial data. Uh, they're currently in progress, and we see some small reductions in spurious radiation in the gravitational waveforms, but again, I'm not going to show the results until I have them completed. Um, and this method will be applied to more challenging cases uh, uh, once we're confident in the results. So, thank you. <laughs>